So it's going to be Eye of Horus. That's the winner's finals, which I shall need to put in here. Winner's finals. Winner's finals, game one on Eye of Horus. That is... So that, that, for those of you not familiar, this is Eye of Horus. It is a map that, despite its size, is actually fairly cloaky oriented. As you can see, plus 2.2 everywhere, and a lot of, a lot of metal, and a lot of hills. And enough expansions that you can easily do a 3v3 on this map. Although it does get kind of bogged down in these lanes in the center. So, Golda... South side going for Cloakybot Factory. Drone in the north side going for Cloakybot Factory as well. And Golda is going to be harassing pretty quick. As is, Actually, Drone not harassing as quick. What? That must be a mistake. Drone drone doesn't play like this. This is weird. Kind of weird, okay? Drone not harassing as much as I'd expect them to. Maybe they're just playing more defensive against Golda, but at the same time, they know they can win. But it's also, at the same time, they're evenly matched. Like, we're talking number one and number two on the ladder. It's very even. But at this point, Drone and Golda are going to be... This, okay, sorry, there's a lot of conversation in the chat going on about how the wind counter should be server-side. It's kind of distracting me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, that should be discussed later. But this, the wind counter is meant to be, it's just, it's meant to be automatic, but it's meant to be done for individual matches. Like, if, server-side has the, a lot of issues. Like, if the room moves, but the players are the same, and it is meant to be the same game, there's meant to be the continuity to it, or if... No, if there's a way of setting, if there's a way of resetting wins. You can. There's a button to reset win counts if you want to do it manually. And I want to have something you can do that you could right-click on the win count for each player and set that manually. So as soon as you introduce that, then who controls that server side? Like at that point, the players can just set whatever arbitrary win counters they want. And everyone has to deal with that. That just seems a little bit silly. And I thought about this before when I made this win counter months ago. As I was considering that, but I'm not sure how you could really do it in a way that wouldn't be open to abuse, or wouldn't be open to just generally having weirdness happen. It's... I don't think it's worth it. Like I said, who would actually control that, and who would control when it's dealing with stuff that we know, that the human players know is supposed to be one way, but the computer doesn't realize? And Kane, are you back? Hey, hey, yeah, I'm back. Okay, cool. You're in this game? Yep. Uh, great. Go to drone. Yes. Yes. Good. Okay. So you've seen, you've seen go drone basically futilely trying to attack Golda and Golda playing it relatively safe, getting in a few shots, but not doing too much to drone. Boy, While I've be been completely tough... ignoring the events of the game, talking about the win counter <laughs> and how it really doesn't have much good being server side and would probably just lead to abuse <laughs> or lead sure. to incorrect results because people are switching around in rooms. Man, I'm really interested to see how these uh, two players match up, especially given I feel like Goda has more of a micro focus style, whereas Drone has specifically told me when I've asked him about it that he doesn't really micro his units. He just sort of macros and uses fight move a lot, which which is like blew my mind when he told me that. He's like, yeah, I don't really care about micro so much. Certainly not in the early. Certainly he does in the early game. Yeah, again, well, I mean, you have to would. in the early game, but yeah. in the later stages of the game, he's focusing more on developing his economy, which uh, has produced some pretty good results as we've seen. Well, I think this map might actually favor Golda then, because you can't really produce your economy much beyond about the halfway mark. Mm -hmm. like once you get to the center, you can easily block it off, so it's hard to get economy around all the sides. True. But at the same time, getting to that point is still a bit tricky. You still have to get to that point first. 
But once that happens, then yeah, go to micro style that focuses more on preserving units than it does on pumping out a huge number of units. I think that'll have a slight advantage on this map. Now, yeah, I, I can see that. Drone. Drone at this point, however, actually already has been pumping out units quite a lot. There's the one yeah. thing. Yeah, this map does get early economy pretty quick. If you send out the workers over to the wings, definitely. Which Golda hasn't done, actually. Golda is going heavily for the center, wants to get that mm -hmm. halfway mark set up as quickly as possible, but not expanding along the center, which allowed these dr like, drones' glaives are coming in along the side. That is going to be a problem. There's oh, actually, boy, look at this big pack coming in from the east. There's this no static defense to deal with this. There's one glaive. There. Oh, man. This, these glaives, if, if Golda can get through this and kill these glaives in time, that'll work okay. Uh, one for two at this point. Although one of the glaives does foolishly move in, or not foolishly as so much as just it didn't know there was a defender there. It does now. But does mistakenly move in there. At the same time, though, drone coming in with so many glaives. I feel like basically oh, pulling. They're pulling Golda into a trap. Yeah, that's right. If you can get these glaives over the hill. Uh, I don't know. It looks like this, nope. this lone Golda glaive not might try for, for a runaround. No. Tricky, well, tricky. Yeah, but Golda does not fall on. for it. That's clever. Well done. Wow. Go to on the other hand, trying to see if they can attack anywhere along this side. Or seeing actually if there's anything along. Not so much to attack, but just to see if anything's there. The warrior is found, and that warrior will go down pretty quick. A bit threatening, though. And along the side, drone losing... Sorry, drone killing off a worker. Killing off a metal extractor. Slowing down an expansion attempt by Golda. This one, though, Golda has... How many workers does Golda have? Golda has like four workers. Not the biggest deal. They can live. It looks like Drone wants out of the micro game. He's already pumped out a few warriors. Looks like he has some rockets. Oh yeah, they want they want that. out of the raider phase. Well, I absolutely. I mean, I can't blame them either. I've mentioned before. If you know that your opponent is better at micro than you, build riots. Yep. Build riots <laughs> yep. quick. Absolutely. Good on the other hand, of course, focusing entirely on glaives at this point. Well, like I said, that's... he has the stronger micro, or like you sure. said, he has the stronger micro. So that's that's not surprising. What is a little surprising is. What drone is building all these caretakers for? I think a factory, maybe? Mm. Actually, it's also kind of surprising is why Gulda has allowed themselves to really lose their economy because they're half economy right now. They don't have any caretakers. They actually were starting almost excessing before because they had more than the 20 build power they're pushing into the factory in income. Mm -hmm. like, oh, Gulda, man. Gulda's commander is under a what pretty big heck? threat here. It is so. not in a good position. Although, oh, at the same man. time, I mean, drone oh, wow. getting forced to retreat, though. Or at least Look, that's what Gulda's trying to do. Glaive sneaking into drone's base. Exactly. That's all exactly these right it. Units. There's nothing here but Rocco's and an LT defend. Oh, there's a warrior that just came out of the base. That's but I not think enough. Give him the slip. That yeah. is not enough. They that warrior will actually get shot killed. That'll be killed. It takes about six glaives to kill a warrior in the right positioning. Yep. That oh, he goes down. Enough. Uh oh. Drone's in big trouble here now. Well, that's what I mean. That's what Gold is trying to do: is force drone's hand to retreat, or drone loses. But basically, this it's the option beautiful. selects. Yep. And yeah, it looks this is like the, the, way to do it. the option that drone's gone for is basically to lose a large chunk of their base. At this wow, point, he's still not even though. I really like how Goda did that. He he alleviated the pressure on his commander from that huge pack of uh, Rockos and warriors by just slipping the glaives in right through in that little window, and then um, deal so much damage here in the base to drone. Yeah, forcing that retreat, and then after that, killing most of the units anyway. Yep. But that's the thing. Yep. You want to you want to make your opponent want to retreat. You mm -hmm. want to push them to retreat so that you can be at an advantageous position, either because their units are out of position or because the units are retreating into yours. Look at this. I think Goda is just about to. Well, he's at economic parity. He's just about to take the eco lead, and he has a huge military. Well, he did. No, he's not until about to take this the eco came up. They're they're not. This that's not going to happen for a while. Look at all the reclaim in, in drones base. Uh, I wasn't counting for that. You're right. That's not going to happen for a few minutes. Like if Golda takes the entire half of the map belonging to that can kind of belong to them, even then it'll still be a few minutes before economic parity is reached. Unless they're able to take the reclaim in the center as well, and even that's not as much, I don't think. It's like 800, yeah, it's like 1300 in Golda's territory, and... Actually, you know what? No, Golda has about as much reclaim to work with. So it could be even. Could work. However, Golda is donating more and more metal over time. This is not what Golda wants to do. No, the northeast side not. is locked down. Hey, Drone did this again! I don't know if you saw that 70 minute game that I cast between Drone and Felthos and Hide and Seek, but Drone yeah, likes yeah, Drone likes these solar farms. These defensive solar farms on their hmm. on their side expansions. 
Interesting. Yeah, it's a thing that they seem to like doing. I guess it makes it hard to maneuver uh, enemy raiders around and that sort of thing. Yeah, it also allows you to set up lotuses in between while it's right. being attacked, making it harder to attack completely. He's really hunkered down in the northeast here. This brawler is uh, working out pretty well for him as well. Oh, for second now, one just came up as well. Where are... Uh, no gremlins. What? Oh, I see. Never mind. Uh, yeah, air factory. Air That's why. Yep. That makes sense. And a hundred swifts. <laughs> Although, still, the economic advantage for drone is starting to become military. The fact that it's in brawlers is probably the only thing that's keeping Golda in a decent position, because Golda can counter this fairly easily, so it can knock down the economy, keep it even again, and then from there go to... Sorry, not the economy, military, and then get the economy advantage later. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to happen yet. Not quickly. One brawler... This brawler is going to be able to retreat in time. There's nothing really stopping it. I don't think. It's not retreating in the right direction. Why is it retreating over here? The heck? No, what? That brawler just committed suicide. Oh, yeah, there's no reason to lose that. That was bizarre. Uh, I don't know, this one in the southeast, I feel like it's going to be dealt with pretty easily by the Swift. Definitely forced to retreat. Yeah. I guess there's the Glaze here to help forced support to it, but through I don't know. Territory. Yeah. I don't think this is going to turn out very well for this brawler. No, that brawler's dead too. But the problem is, I mean, with that, okay, now we're closer to military parity, at least by value. But then again, the economy... And Golda does not have that yet. Drone hasn't actually been reclaiming a whole lot in their base, despite their caretakers being there. Their caretakers have been focusing entirely on building new stuff. Not been focusing on building up... Or on reclaiming, rather. And another set of glaives. Wow. wow. And on top of that, Swift's coming in, trying to get rid of the brawlers. Getting rid of the trident, that's... A, okay, not making the same mistake day, as... Beautiful. Yeah, but I mean... That trident, that was risky. That almost was death. But still, this Swift's doing a nice job. And where is Drone's... Okay, Drone has an air switch. They're getting Hawks. I mean, they had their Brawlers. They had their Tridents. It's a little late for that now. This Warrior, however, it's... I don't think the position's going to work. I don't think the Glaze can get around it to kill it. Like, Glaze need to pretty much outright surround a Warrior to kill it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the Splash Damage just gets rid of all the Glaze before it becomes the Glaze game. Uh, that being uh, said, though... Oh, these characters are going to go down. These characters, that's the thing. They need to go down. And economic parity has been reached, by the way. Golda now even economically. One Excellent. of the characters down. Another character is going to go down. At this point, I think Drone is forced excess. Or no, 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 they're not. Never mind. They have three characters by their air factory. They're sure. by far from forced to excess. They're still good. Which is actually rather dangerous because that's two, well, that's 30 metal for Golda and 40 metal for Drone in air. And that actually is that much. No, no, not quite. No, it's like... It's probably like 35 or so. But still, there is an advantage for production. And Gorda just loses their commander so right warriors. underneath all those Hawks to the war. Yep. Wow. Three warriors will kill a commander. Pretty much outright. These, uh, these Hawks have cleared out the airspace, so Drone definitely has a window here to put some more Brawlers into action. Doesn't look like it's what it'll be doing yet. Because why not? Size. There we go. Sure. Rain out the uh, last little bits of eco here from Gota. I think that's... Basically, at that point, going to be a contain. It's already kind of been... A, it's already halfway... Drone's already gone past the halfway mark. Mm. That's always a good sign for the player that does that. Yep, absolutely. And it looks like from here, I mean, Golda, they're. I think they're trying to stockpile somewhat, but uh, what can they stockpile? I don't know. He's, it looks like he's still stockpiling glaives. I, I feel like he. you have to switch up the strategy a little bit here. You can't just keep doing the same thing you've been doing for 12 minutes. No, not on its own, at least. Not glaives. Just glaives. Ah, uh, jeez. Like, and Drone is set up so well to defend against these glaives. He has Stardust in the bottlenecks here. He has Warriors out on the field. Huge masses of glaives of his own. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, if you're Goto, what do you do from here? I think Glaive Rocco. Just Rocco to get rid of the Warriors and glaives to deal with their... And you can deal with their glaives with your glaives. You know you can if you're yeah, Goda. The true. Rocco's deal with the Warriors, no problem. It's Rocco's to help out with that. Yeah, I would agree with that. But then you have this air threat. Oh, a couple of napalm bombers coming into Goda's base. That is actually the biggest problem. Is now Gota, drones converting that into well, try to convert it into damage. But the Swifts are still alive. Good defense. The Hawks did not completely tear apart all of Gota's air force. They just prevented it from attacking. Sure. But they haven't killed it. Big difference. Uh, the Hawks. I think they're overextending here, flying over this AA. No, there's not much AA. Uh, yeah, you're right. Now oh, it there's looks like they're locking down the factory as well. Oh, look at the LLTs dealing some damage. Yeah, getting Hawks. close enough. Wow. Wow, you know, I think he had a point. Yeah, you're right. They did overextend. Turned oh, out mostly boy. because of the LLTs. Of, that was a lot of metal to donate. 
It's all right next to these caretakers, too. Oh, That's yeah. about 1.5k here in uh, just in go to space alone. Yes, an easy 1.5k. And that's not including all the territory that Golda has. What sure. little is left of it. But can he use it? I, I don't know if he has the freedom right now. Well, if they get another care if they get another two caretakers, then yes. Because mm -hmm. they can use a couple for reclaim and then the rest of them because they have 40 build power on the table. Building units. I mean, heck, they don't even have to build another caretaker. They could just use one of the caretakers to reclaim, keep the other one constructing. That way, they're using all their build power and using all their economy. Mm. And they're not wasting anything. They're not missing any reclaim. That'd probably be the most efficient thing to do, not involving building another caretaker. And at this Internet. point, Drone? He's actually switched out of Hawks and into Swiss now. But that, was a mis that might have been a mistake. I feel like it was. Yeah, I feel like he was Drone doing better with everything. the air security with the Hawks. Hmm. Yeah, because I mean, the Hawks being lost over in the base, that was a mistake, but otherwise, they were forcing those Swiss back, and now at this point, Gota can be bold again. Gota yeah. can be aggressive again. That's right. We're seeing more Hawks, but at this point, there's some defenses. There's a few here and there, but these Swifts... I mean, Swifts cost about half as much as a Hawk, I think? Yeah, half as much as a Hawk. So, it's definitely worth it, even if they lose one Swift for every Hawk. Mm -hmm. That's still... that is still in Gota's favor. And the center... Wow, okay, Golda is... Those Swifts! Those Swifts, getting rid of that set of Hawks really opened things up for Golda. And now they are reclaiming, taking it with workers, not taking with caretakers. No, they are taking with caretakers as well. So, that is working out nicely. Accessing a little bit, or almost accessing. Very nearly. I think Golda's gonna stop it. Yeah, there we go. Golda has that under control. They're not gonna excess. They are gonna push what they need to in metal, though. And how many Swifts do they have? They have about a dozen Swifts... And Hawks continue to be drone strategy of choice. I feel like Air's the best chance for Gunner to make a comeback here because of the way that drones lock things down, at least for the ground forces. But if he could get some bombers into the back of drone space to start tearing up the economy, maybe some napalm bombers to bomb out yeah, the, uh, the wind windmill gens. farms. Mm -hmm. That I sort agree. of thing. I think I feel like that'd be the best chance, and well, especially I, if he could mass these Swifts, which can also uh, strafe the ground yeah. units too. I mostly agree. My one contention would be that there is there's a lot of defenders. Yeah, there's that's a true. lot of anti-air on this map. And that's yep. not to say like, razors or anything. As soon as they as soon as drone spots that, they're gonna build razors. Mm. You know they are. Yeah, sure. So it's gonna be maybe one pass, that's it. And the wind gen's gonna be rebuilt. And everything's gonna be, and the glaives have a great chance actually at this point. And even they're having a bit of a hard time, but they have probably the best chance just because they can just tear through everything in odd angles. Whereas the napalm bombers, they have one way of they're coming in, they throw mm. a banana down, and then they leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to put it. But that's like one pass, and then there'll be like three razors by the time the second pass comes in. Yeah, it would definitely get locked down right after that. Yep, more Hawks now coming in from Drone. I'm a little surprised that Golda hasn't built an air pad, mind you. Oh, yeah, for the repair. Mm -hmm. Especially now that they have Napalm Bombers, they are, in fact, going for something along the lines of what you mentioned. But that... That is going to be tricky. Man, it is just so hard to think of a trump card in a position like this. Especially with the uh, constant pressure of actually playing the game as well. Well, yeah, I think... No, Golda's not even going to bother. Golda's strategy is play game two. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's probably his best strategy at this point. Wow, it's uh, another win for Drone there. That was a pretty decisive victory too. It Some was, back and forth. but but it kind of what yeah. you mentioned. I mean, I, Golda's, I think, out of practice. Yeah, that could certainly be a big part of it. Because I have never seen Golda play that sloppy with the economy. Mm -hmm. like where they weren't building or expanding as much as they could be. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, additionally, I mean, Drone's just general strategy tends to favor the long game, right? If he's playing more of a macro-focused game, plays a low-micro game, you know, just sort of defends against the Raiders with stacked defenses, um, then once you get a slight military advantage, you can keep that rolling basically for the rest of the game, which is what we saw there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that combined with his economic advantage, let him just slowly but surely steamroll the uh, formidable Gota. Yep. Now... Guys are playing. It's an interesting choice. Uh, why is the game... Sorry, stuff is taking a while to quit. Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Next game starting. That's why. It's because there was a loading going on in the background. Mm. Silly me. Okay, so we're on to game two.
And that is going to be game two. Hmm. So on Geyser Plains. Why do you think Goda chose Geyser Plains in particular? Look at the size of the map. Look at mm. how much metal there is, or rather, how little metal there is, and how sure. concentrated the metal there is. Yeah, definitely a micro-focused map. That's a good point. Especially when you consider that it's very it's close positions to begin with. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't think Goda's going to go for a rush, but they are going to go for hitting the center real quick. Probably going to try to go south as fast as possible. Maybe go north a bit. They take that one plus two point eight. Yeah, but definitely. That's, that's this map. Light vehicle factory. So do you think we'll see a slasher push here to open with? I don't think so. I think we'll see a bunch of scorchers. Scorchers? I think scorchers try to push out. Maybe slashers behind them. Mm -hmm. But I think that Golda realizes playing the long game isn't the best tactic against drones. So they might just go for a commander dive early on. Yeah, that makes sense too. Because in this map, I mean, look at the amount of metal there is. It takes until about reclaim or overdrive before you get to the point where commanders stop mattering. Yeah. Or commanders barely matter. They're like a fifth or a sixth of your economy rather than being half of your economy. Yeah, and uh, the, the mechs are focused mostly on the periphery of the map rather than the center as well. So uh, it makes it hard to take them decisively if your opponent's put, applying a lot of pressure to your base. Not really. The plus 2.8s are near the center and actually near Golda's side. Well, the plus 4 at the bottom is... Yeah, that's on the periphery, so I'll give you that one. But a lot of the strong ones are in the center. Anyway, Golda going for the light vehicles there, going for... Actually, light vehicle mirror. Interesting. Hmm. That's not what I expect on this map. I'd expect Shieldbot Mirror on this map. And Drone going for early Scorcher. Goda going for early Dart. Two early Darts. I guess they're just building up as quickly as possible. They're not... What are they doing? Economy focus. Interesting. Waiting to feel it out, probably. See what the opener is here from Drone. Maybe. Well, they know now it's Scorchers. So what are they going to do? They are going to go for Scorchers of their own. Not surprising. Getting just enough economy to keep that up a little bit longer. Yeah, this is going to be fairly, fairly tricky. I mean, at this point, the darts, they do have one advantage. They are powerful units, if frail. And powerful but frail is what Golda does. Like, Golda, if, if there's nothing that Golda is known for, it's their dagger micro. Like, Golda's dagger micro is pretty legendary. And actually, hmm. you, you're right, there are Slashers. So Slasher and Scorcher, interesting combination. Just the two of them. But yeah, it's it's still it's one of those things that Golda has been known for is just Dagger Micro. Which I'm a bit surprised that Hovercrafts was not the factory of choice. Yeah, take a Hovercraft. bunch of daggers and then rip everything apart using the high alpha mm -hmm. and Golda's micro skill. Yeah, especially being really strong raiders, I feel like that would have been a great choice for Golda. Feels like Hovercrafts have definitely uh, fallen out of favor recently, though. They... They sort of have. I don't think they've gotten weaker. It's just I think people have realized what you can do with some of the other factories. Mm. Yeah, I'd agree. Particularly, with that. I mean, heavy tanks has also kind of fallen out of favor. Light vehicles has gotten really popular. Heavy tanks, heavy tanks used to be a favorite of certain players like Lowry, and now it's now it's never used. I think because like Scorchers kind of can be Panthers. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Heavy tanks were never that popular though. Hovercraft, on the other hand, did have a. I think they had a whole tournament pretty much where they were in Vogue. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I remember. That was, that was an interesting tournament. And whoa, Golda going very heavily yeah, economy. They are not cheesing at row. all. That is really surprising to me. Huh, so they are not going for cheese. Do you think he's going for a long game then? That's what it looks. Well, yes, sort of. Maybe I don't know. I don't. Know. I wouldn't quite call it a long game yet because they're going. F I mean, the two workers in a row though. I feel like yeah, I that's that's saying something. Yeah, that's pretty telling. If it was one worker, then I'd say, oh no, they're just they're just trying to expand sure. out a little bit more so that a bit more of a safe economy base. But yeah, with two workers, they are. I think they're thinking they're going to go for the long game, but it's not going to be as long as I have Horus. Sure, absolutely. Because I have Horus, that is quite the long game. That's a long game map, but mm. like, common catchers longer, but that's not saying much. <laughs> but this map, it's a short game map, even when you're playing the long game. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was really surprised. It's because, you know, it's another worker to defend and uh, one less military unit to defend it with. I don't think Golda cares about that. Look at Golda's territory. Look at Golda Slashers. I mean, look at how much room they're going to cover with that. Yeah, this is sort of what I was expecting to see from him. It's pretty common on this map as well, at least recently for the higher level players. Oh, to okay. uh, build up a nice critical mass of Slashers and then push towards the center. I haven't uh, seen much vehicle play on this map, honestly. I'm so used to, I'm so used to shield bots and the occasional heavy tank. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it's a little surprising, especially if you don't realize that the uh, terrain is much flatter than it appears. Yeah, this the, is uh, sky view. Flat this is very flat terrain. There's yeah. no denying that. It's easy to assume and the hills big are vehicle passable. Uh, yep. So it's surprising to some players. So you don't really see it a lot, but um, yeah, like I mentioned, I've seen it from uh, just the top level players for the most part. Pretty much this exact same strategy that we're seeing from both players. You build a large slasher wall and uh, move slowly but steadily towards your opponent's base. Of course, while Drone has that slasher wall, Golda has more scorchers. They can cut through those. Yeah, I feel like, or even just go around them. You don't really need to cut through it so much if you can apply pressure to the flanks here. Especially given that no one's gone for South 4. Mm -hmm. The South plus 4 has not been hit at all. Which is surprising. Yeah. I would have thought them in Golda's first option. And well, now Golda's going to lose their slasher wall. They're not careful. Their commander getting in the way. Oh boy, that's not good. That is not what they want to see. Commander at half health as a result of that. Oof, but we are seeing the slashers or scorchers slip around in the north here. There we go. That's what Golda's, That's what uh, Golda wants to do. Trying to envelope? I don't know. This is kind of a weird approach to take. No, I think they were trying. They. I don't think they're trying to cross the T on that one. No, I wouldn't either. There we go. Heading into the base. This the range is, the is right too call. big. Oh man, they might be able to dive this factory. They will. There's only oh, one defender. That's it. Jeez. The factory's dead. Uh oh. Well, the scorcher might help, but no, it's not gonna help that much. The I don't only good is. Go to some dire straits himself. The slasher wall has a has this a clean shot right at his base as well. Yeah, base trade is what it's well, looking like to me. I would say though, Golda does actually have that entire area set. Like they still have the entire area being destroyed for drone's base. Like drone's base is gone. Golda, they can still rush in back with their scorchers and do some damage and help defend. Yeah, and the scorchers, as long as they can survive, they can take out a slasher. If they take out a slasher each, they're in the lead. Barely, but still in the lead. Although, at the same time, Drone has come around back. This Scorcher needs to go down, but... I mean, look at this. Golda has taken out Drone's entire base. Drone has basically nothing. They have their commander, which is gonna... Oh! Oh! Never mind. Golda does, Gold does not have their commander. Golda does not have their commander at all. Drone has four times as much metal production now. They do, but they also are gonna lose all their military in about two seconds. I think he might get his commander taken out. Oh, no, no, no. No, no that Never wasn't mind. gonna happen. But Didn't that's the only the, uh, military unit on there. the map. That wow. is it. <laughs> that's the one last military unit. Okay, now there's one Scorcher for Golda. But yeah, that's it. There's no more production for Drone. There's some production for Golda, but no metal. Drone has the so reclaim here to build enough slow. LTs to just lock down the factory. I think this is a good game for Golda. I think this is too. I Gota think we're going to see Golda lose his finals. So did, wow, is Drone going to go 2-0 against Golda? That is. I think so. I didn't expect that. I also didn't expect the pathing to be a problem because I thought that pathing was supposed to be fixed in engine 92 and then we're on 98 or 99 release candidates. Yeah. Well, yeah. Having the commander oh. alive, it, like, they couldn't really dive the commander. That was the one problem. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Look at that. I didn't have the economy to do it. So that's, that's 2 0. I completely forgot to update the. The display to say that it was game two on Geyser planes, but I think that was kind of obvious. Sorry about that for everyone who's watching on YouTube. That was a slight mistake. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, right. We're on to what are we on to? So.